Did you know that in 1978, there was a Star Wars holiday special on network TV that was an incredible piece of historical pop culture renaissance that was also absolutely insane. Let's celebrate Life Day with the Chewbacca fam, y'all. Right off the bat, it's important to note that this is the very first spin-off of the entire Star Wars franchise. Something that has become so common to this very day, it's almost impossible to keep track of. I said almost. Guarantee you we all have somebody in our life that can recite that entire list from front to back and is just begging for us to try him on it. But now let's get started, shall we? Yes. It took place between the first two films, so the whole world was still pretty new to the Star Wars characters. And the first character we're getting a whole detailed backstory on is Chewbacca, the Wookiee. That means awesome in Wookiee. We open in on the home of Chewie's family on the planet Kashyyyk. Don't at me if I'm mispronouncing that. Actually, you know what? Go for it. We could all learn. And this place is awesome. Like a Swiss family Robinson house with a classic 80s sitcom interior. No exaggeration, the first 15 minutes of this movie is entirely straight up Wookiee speak. <laughs> Just watching a Wookiee family interact around their Wookiee house, barking Wookiee screams at each other. This also includes an entire sequence where baby Wookiee entertains himself with a futuristic device which I can only describe as a hologram circus man performance that lets you know you have not smoked nearly enough weed to watch this special right now. Also, baby Wookiee, absolutely adorable. But wait, it gets crazier. Chewbacca's family. <laughs> then the Chewbacca's get on their FaceTime device and call up Luke, who I guess can speak Wookiee now? You know, I always thought that was Han Solo's most badass quality. He was fluent in Wookiee. And now Luke's stepping on his corner? Back up, Skywalker. What's up, Chewbacca? Yeah, we'll bring him to the screen. I want to say hello to him. <laughs> You don't know where he is? Although on closer inspection, he's actually just reacting to their body language and head nods. Kind of the way you try to read what your dog's trying to say, but actually might be way off. Either way, they tell him that Chewbacca's not home yet, and they are worried. An Imperial Guard. I suppose you want to see my identification? No, I'm off duty. I've come to look around your shop. Then we get this guy who's doing some space shopping. And we can tell he's up to no good because the ominous background tones and mysterious way he speaks and prowls. Also, he's wearing a fucking Darth Vader helmet. It's kind of a dead giveaway. Then Mrs. Chewie calls him up through space calling technology to check in on the chic rug she ordered. Then he drops this awesome pun. She did it all by herself. In fact, you might say she did it by hand. Solo. <laughs> then space shop guy just sort of trails off. Like he expected the director to say cut like nine seconds earlier. I don't like embarrassing people. I don't like being embarrassed myself. That's why I don't like to embarrass people. I just said that. Hello. <laughs> Today we are going to be preparing a very succulent dish called Bantha Surprise. Then we get this whole weird cooking show sequence, which I'm not even gonna try to explain, but it keeps on going. Your family has a hearty appetite? I would suggest then that old popular holiday favorite, the Bantha Rump. <laughs> stir, whip, stir, whip, 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 stir. Come on, faster all together now, cooking can be fun. Stir, whip, stir, whip. She just keeps going, huh? It's like five and a half minutes of this shit. Mmm, starting to have a fine aroma. <laughs> and yet, it gets crazy. I thought you might like this. It's one of those that, uh, oh, it's a real, it's kind of hard to explain. It's a, uh, wow. <laughs> you know what I mean? Space Shop Dude shows up to the Wookiee home and gifts Grandpa Wookiee this VR device, which allows him to watch this Frankie Avalon like sequence where he sees this. Oh, oh, we are excited, aren't we? We can have a good time, can't we? Oh. I am your experience. I 
Alright, alright, let's just skip ahead. Let's just say it never stops focusing on the horniness of Grandpa Wookie. Which, who was this scene for, exactly? Wasn't this thing supposed to be aimed at kids? Because it feels like it was aimed at making everybody in the family living room super uncomfortable. Happy Life Day, pal. Aww. Moving on. So, the Chewbacca family is actually celebrating Life Day, which is basically Christmas on their planet, which I actually appreciate them doing, because doesn't Christmas already cover enough unexplainable ground on our planet? It's best to not have to try to explain how it also made its way up to space. Darth Helmet Guy barges into the Wookiee house, and then just helps himself to their futuristic hologram device, so he can watch this space metal band just rock out. This is Jefferson Starship, which actually sounds like a perfect band for the Star Wars universe. But the name is never brought up, so the irony is completely wasted. They jam into this lightsaber microphone for a solid 5 plus minute performance, while all the others in the room just kind of stand around like, just gonna watch that whole video, huh? Your headphones are broken, or... Real foreshadowing of the future, when someone just watches a full YouTube video in your house at full volume with zero consideration of the rest of the room. Then we keep the segment train rolling when Lumpy, the adorable baby Wookiee, watches a full-on cartoon featuring all the Star Wars favorites in that lovable 70s style animation that you never see anymore. Are you alright? I'm not sure. What happened? I don't know. Well, somebody must know something. <laughs> So, in this universe, there's animated movies starring characters that are the actual characters in your life, taking on missions that they may or may not actually be doing right now, that you can put on to watch the adventures they get into, while you're waiting for your Wookiee father to get home as he does one of these actual missions. The Wookiee world is awesome. While Lumpy's catching up on these tunes, the Imperial Guards just kick the shit out of his room. Cause they're a bunch of massive dickwads who have no respect for the Wookiee home that just presented them with a full on seven minute shit rocking hologram performance by Jefferson Starship. You know what? Fuck these guys. I'm starting to get why everyone calls them the evil empire now. Eventually we end up back in that awesome alien bar from the first movie where we get a cameo from B. Arthur who's now bartending the establishment, and I'm just now realizing looked roughly 57 for about 40 years straight. Hello, Acmina. Okay, we'll do it your way, hello. Now we'll do it my way, what'll it be? Can we talk? She's getting harassed by desperate Dave over here, who's basically that creepy local you see at any dive bar who won't stop obsessing over the bartender because he severely misreads customer service as true love. When I left here the other night, I felt something that I haven't felt in longer than I care to remember. I felt alive again. And all he said was six simple words. Come back soon. I'll be waiting. Well. <laughs> There's not a single person who's worked at a bar who doesn't at least have one person that immediately comes to mind when looking at this guy. Also, he takes his beverages through the top of his head because it's important we get reminded that all these people are actually just aliens. We are placing a curfew on the entire Tatooine system effective immediately. All inhabitants will return to their homes at once. <laughs> the Imperial Guard pop on the big screen and tell everyone to get out. Because it's important that they ruin everyone's life day like the true evil villains they are. The rowdy drunks at the bar don't take it well and start demanding another round. Which causes B. Arthur to bless them all with an entire musical number. And another round of drinks on the house. Pure music to an alien drunk's ears or whatever they use for listening purposes. Han and Chuli finally make it back home, but need to do it on the sneak, because there's a stormtrooper on guard now, but he eventually just falls off the staircase reaching for his gun. Cause stormtroopers are clunky as fuck and have never actually guarded anything successfully. Chewie finally gets to reunite with his family, because apparently evading that one stormtrooper was all that was needed to make a successful mission. Which is totally cool, since this was apparently just a holiday musical. No Battles of the Death Star were needed for a one night special on CBS. We close everything out with this Life Day ceremony. 
which is giving off heavy cult vibes, which is totally cool with me in the Wookiee universe. Who am I to throw stones at Wookiee tradition? We celebrate a day of peace. Princess Leia then breaks off a solo performance out of nowhere, singing for everybody about joy and peace. Not unlike every church visit I've ever had in my entire life, except way more Wookiees. And we end with a lovely shot of the Chewbacca fam sitting around the table holding hands. No words, no Wookiee cries, just vibes. And if that's not what Life Day is all about, then maybe I was never meant to understand Life Day. Roll credits. Followed by a network reminder that Wonder Woman and the Incredible Hulk will be back at their normal time slot next week. They don't make them like they did in 78, y'all. Except they literally do remake these all the time. But somehow, they seemed way cooler back then. Wonder Woman starring Linda Carter and Incredible Hulk starring Bill Bixby will return at their regular times next Friday evening on most of these stations. So, what did we learn here today? How about that I'm willing to sit through an entire Star Wars holiday special from 1978, taking vigorous notes for all you people which featured about 20 minutes of straight Wookiee dialogue, a shit ton of musical numbers, one of which featured a fantasy woman arousing the grandpa Wookiee through VR technology so he could get his Wookiee rocks off. I really do love y'all. Happy Life Day. So if you have any other network specials, throwback scenes, or classic videos you'd like to see me review next, Leave it in the comments and subscribe for all new retro reviews. I'm Castle, and I'll see you there.